Welcome. Today, I want to talk about Ghost Glue and all the crazy stuff it can do. First, I'm going to go over how to set it up, then some details on how it works. And at the end, I'll show you how I summoned a meteor to test my strength. There's a lot to unpack, so I'm going to start simple and not assume what you may or may not know. Ghost Glue is an invisible link we can create between two objects that makes them attracted to each other. I like to think of it like magnets, but honestly it's more like creating a gravitational pull between two objects. As the mass of each object plays a large factor in how attracted they are to each other. This happens when you attempt to glue an ultra broken object to any other object. Ultra breaking an object is pretty simple. You need a file that either has the wind tipple or the fire tipple completed, and you need to talk to these guys at Lookout Landing. Save before performing the glitch, and later in the video, I'll show you how to transfer your build through saves so you'll always be able to perform the glitch again. Put an object in front of them, stand on it, and then talk to them. Then, try to ultra hand the object. If it doesn't move, it's ultra broken. You can attach another device to the ultra broken object so that you can move it. Then get another Zonai device close to it, grab the ultra broken object, and attempt to attach it. You should see that they now have an attraction, and this is Ghost Glue. The amount of attraction these two objects works off a principle known as mass matching, but to better understand this it might be helpful to understand what's causing the attraction to begin with. Normally, when you attempt to ultra hand two objects together, the game will pull them together to create a bond. It appears that Ghost Glue stops right before the bond is created, making two objects constantly attempt to get close enough to create the bond. To see how much one object will be attracted to another one, simply attach them regularly first. This is one of the objects with the most mass in the game. If I attempt to connect these two with a large gap in the middle, the hover stone will move all the way to the large stone. If I do the same with two hover stones, they meet in the middle. This doesn't stop at one object though. The mass of the whole build matters. If I attempt to attach this wood to the stone, but it has its own stone attached, they will basically meet in the middle. This is the general idea of the mass matching principles and will help you visualize how much attraction two objects will have towards each other. Once we have these two things pulled apart, you can see that twisting one will twist the other. This happens because it's trying to keep the same position it was ghost glued in. You can also use ghost glue on an ultra broken shield and let chaos take the wheel. You can harness this chaos to create a self-propelled flying machine. It's not easy to control, but it can help keep the device near you. You can also ghost glue two builds and have them work independently, but still affect each other. Normally when you get on a control stick, it turns on everything attached. But by separating certain pieces, we can avoid turning them on until we need to. The combination of all these things makes this ship that can maneuver like this, but stop mid-air any time. It will also follow me wherever I go. Messing around with this, I realized that the amount of attraction between an object and a hover stone or a stabilizer will change whether or not the device is on. This may work with other Zonai devices, but these were the devices that were easiest to work with. I began to utilize this to make things move to me or move me to a location. 
This gave me some ideas, so let's get a little deeper. We can really start to make this attraction work for us by combining this with other glitches. First, Fuse and Tangle. Fuse and Tangle is done by swapping shields mid-fuse. The game thinks the object is on our shield, but it is still usable in the game world. Because the shield stays with you and is visible and loaded in the game world, the device will also be loaded in the game world. Zuggling this shield will keep it on your back and will allow it to travel through loads. This combination is called ZLOT, or Zuggle Load Object Transfer. The last addition is called a Recall Lock. When you have a zlotted item, you can recall it then load a save. Now the object is going to be locked in place until you recall it again. This means I can create a large distance between two ghost glued objects by recalling them in the start location and the destination location. At this point it's best to assume that every object you see me mess in this video from here on out is slotted. Pretty much is going to stay in the game world until I decide otherwise. Here's the first silly idea I had with it. There is a recall locked hoverstone glued to an ultra broken hoverstone way up in the sky. That ultra broken hoverstone is ghost glued to this hoverstone on the ground. When I turn it on, I go up. So even though a slotted Zonai device will stay loaded no matter where you are on the map, you can only get so far from the device before it's frozen and unable to move. But non-Zonai devices will move regardless of how far you are. If you see here, I drop a hoverstone and wood, I teleport to a different location, and if I use recall to get an idea of where they're at, you can see that the hoverstone is stuck in the sky while the wood has fallen all the way through the ground. This brings up another thing. Collision in the world is only around Link, so if you get too far from a regular object, it'll fall straight through the ground. So when using ghost glue, it's best to keep these things in mind. For now, I think that's enough of Ghost Glue 101. There's still a lot of quirky aspects that take a lot to explain, and if that's something you're interested in, let me know below. I feel like the possibilities of Ghost Glue and Recall Locks still have a lot left to discover, including the possibility of skipping GSI. It may not be speedrun viable, but I can go over it in more detail in Ghost Glue 102. Now for the Test of Strength Challenge. I use these metal boxes because I tested with the largest box in the game and it just doesn't hit as hard. I think the weight and speed matter but also the material. This hoverstone is recall locked and the meteor is ghost glued to the hoverstone. These boxes are ultra broken and anti-mass, meaning that they're unaffected by gravity. One thing to note is it still has its mass. Given that it's ultra broken, I can fly far away from here and travel back to the bell location to start the challenge. And now we wait patiently. I use recall on it to get an idea of where it's going, as recall doesn't affect ultra broken objects, technically. This was my first attempt, but I wanted to show it to you anyway so you can see the ghost glue effects at long distances. You can see I mark it multiple times, and even though it's extremely off target, it has a curve to it in the direction that I was hoping it would go. After a few more attempts, and learning more about the ghost glue attraction, I get this attempt. I only use one box in this attempt, because even though gravity has no effect on it, the mass still plays a huge role in pulling the object straight to the hoverstone. The more mass it has, the harder it is to pull it out of its orbit and straight to the target. I did not get the score that I was hoping for, so I move away from trying to hit the bell head on and attempt to call it from the sky with ghost glue to guide it to its location. Normally I try to make the finale theatrical and dramatic, but I want you to see how this went down exactly the way I did.
Oh. Ah. So I'm happy with the 248. It's the highest score I've seen so far, but if you have a video of a higher score, please send it my way. I only got through about half of what I wanted to in this video, and my next focus will be working with some of the text diving people and using Ghost Glue to try to leave GSI with as little runes as possible. Which I don't even know if I can do, but I'm gonna try. I also have a ton of footage of me going extremely far out of bounds in shrines and in the prologue that I think would be really cool to show you. Subscribe so you don't miss it. Anyways, thanks for watching.